Hello students. In this video, we're going to consider a ordinary differential equation and without solving it, um, we're going to get uh, some sketches of uh, the solution behavior um, just by considering the differential equation and the form of the equation. Okay, so in this video, here's all the things we're going to do. We're going to construct a phase portrait, construct something called a flow, we're going to sketch, give a rough sketch of the slope field, what we would expect for the slope field. And then we're going to identify the independent, dependent variables, the slope function, and uh, two equilibrium points um, or solutions. Actually, there's going, yes, there'll be two. Um, and one will be an attractor, the other will be a repeller. Okay, so let's get started. All right, the first thing is, um, I'm going to write this uh, dx dt as x with a dot over it. So I'm going to call that x dot. If um, that's common notation when you take derivatives with respect to time or t, um, oftentimes you'll see it in differential equation um, texts and literature. You'll see that written as x dot. The right hand side here is called the slope function. Uh, sometimes it's called the rate function. I'll refer to it as the slope function. And uh, we could see there that since x is being differentiated with respect to t, as implied by this equation here, um, the independent variable is t. That's the input uh, variable is t. And the dependent variable is x. And uh, that's x depends on t. So we identified the independent variable is t, the dependent variable is x, and the slope function is x times 2 minus x. Um, I'll point out why I'm making a big deal out of that in a moment. Um, now note that x is a function of t. I'm making a note of that here. So x will depend on t. And um, oftentimes, um, you'll see differential equations that will be written generally as, you know, like x primed or x dot equals f of t x. Um, where we put the uh, independent variable first and the dependent variable second. Um, most of the time you see that. Sometimes you see these reversed, but most of the time you see it this way. Um, but if the right-hand side lacks the independent variable, like it does in this case, there, it doesn't uh, involve t. Now that does not mean that x is x of t. When we don't write the t in this case, we would call that suppressing the variable or suppressing the t. Here, t is not being multiplied by x in this case, or there's no function um, that's just explicitly written as t, like sine of t or cosine of t, okay? It's just x is on the right-hand side. So that's what we mean by it lacks the independent variable. Um, then uh, we often see the differential equation written as x dot equals f of x, and that's called an autonomous equation. Um, it's autonomous of t, okay? So let's keep proceeding. All right, um, I'm going to just plot the uh, slope function. And uh, of course, it looks like an upside down parabola, 2x minus x squared if you distribute the x, and that's an upside down parabola. And um, it has zeros at 0 and 2. And um, this diagram, now notice I'm plotting the slope function. So I'm really plotting x dot versus x, so the derivative of x versus x. Now notice the independent variable is not on this axis, okay? It's x dot versus x. There's no view of the independent variable t in this case. Um, I notice that, uh, or I'll point out, that x dot is negative when you're left of 0. It's positive between 0 and 2, and it's negative when you're above 2, okay? So that's going to become important because we want to identify where the solution might be increasing and decreasing. And we want to be able to classify these um, points 0 and 2, which are the zeros of the slope function. Those are called equilibrium solutions. Now, I'm going to take this axis, essentially, and I'm just going to rotate it counterclockwise. So I'm going to flip it up this way. So up is the positive direction. And uh, so now I'm going to look at the solutions x. Now, if I can solve for x, I would have the solution. So I'm going to sketch some, get a, get a rough idea of what the, what the behavior of the solutions are. 
Now notice that when you are above 2, this way, x dot, or x, the derivative of x, is less than 0. Between 0 and 2, the derivative was greater than 0, and if, it's, um, if uh, x is less than 0, then x primed was less than 0. Now that tells me that x is increasing, if you're above 2, decreasing between 0 and 2, and, um, I'm sorry, it's decreasing if you're above 2, it's increasing if you're between 0 and 2, and it's decreasing if you're um, less than 0. So I'll denote that. Um, we're decreasing if you're above 2, increasing if you're between 0 and 2, and decreasing if you're less than 0. And I'll also indicate that by putting these thick arrows um, on, this, uh, on the flow. Um, now this diagram here is uh, called the phase portrait and um, I'm going to, um, since these arrows are converging towards one another, I will fill the hole in and I'll call that an attractor. If they are diverging from each other um, at that equilibrium solution, I call that a repeller. And those are the um, equilibrium solutions 0 and 2 which are where the differential equation is equal to zero. So the attractor equilibrium, that's where the arrows converge, so that's where you'll be decreasing in one side of it and increasing on the other side of the equilibrium, and uh, vice versa. You'll be increasing and decreasing on opposite sides of a repeller. It makes sense. You're repelling away from the equilibrium here. You're being attracted to the equilibrium. Now, if I want to sketch the the slope field, notice that I'm going to take this information here and I'm going to plot now x versus t. Now this is versus the independent variable and um, notice that the peak of the slope function is at 1. You can verify that using calculus or you can just remember that the peak of the parabola is between the, the zeros. Um, there's all kinds of ways to find the vertex of a parabola. But anyways, uh, the point being that um, we know that between 0 and 2, the function's you know, gradually increasing, and above 2, it's decreasing, and below 0, it's decreasing, but we'd like a little more subtlety. We'd like to know what this curvature is like. And so based on this information, by knowing where the peak is, that it's, you're changing concavity, right? Because the derivative hits a peak at um, when x is 1, so wherever there's a peak in a derivative, the, the graph of a derivative, that is um, a maximum for the derivative, so that's where the um, second derivative is equal to 0. You know, so uh, that remember that that's um, the case for an original function, right? Where the derivative is equal to 0, that's where its um, peaks or valleys could be. Um, the same works for the derivative, okay? Its peaks or valleys are where its derivative, the second derivative, is equal to 0. So um, where the peak of the derivative is, that's where the inflection point is. And so we have an inflection point here at, at 1. Now, um, you could figure this out. You can say, oh, well, it's concave up um, between 0 and 1 because um, we are um, uh, in the positive direction and the, and the derivative is increasing. And now the derivative is decreasing between 1 and 2. Um, but, oh, what's going on here? Um, when you're above 2, it's still decreasing, but it happens to be negative, so that means it's going to be concave up. And likewise, if it's less than 0, it's negative, even though it's increasing. So if it's increasing, you think it'd be concave up, but because it's negative, it's going to be concave down. You could reason that out. The other thing you could do is you could just take the second derivative. So differentiate this again. It takes x double dot. You use the product rule on this term, so you'll get x double dot is x dot with 2 minus x left alone plus x times the derivative of 2 minus x, which is minus x dot. Then I'll factor out an x dot from here and an x dot from here. I'll put them out there and I'll get 2 minus x minus x. I'll simplify that. x double dot is this expression here. And then I'm going to factor out this 2. And when I do that, um, this is what the second derivative looks like. The inf so the second derivative has zeros at x is 0, x is 2, and x is 1. Those are, the inf um, those are the points where the second derivative is 0. And then I just do a sign analysis on this function here, and I see that when it's less than 0, it's negative. 
positive, negative, positive, and then I can see where it's concave down below zero, concave up, hits one as the inflection, then goes concave down, um, and then it's concave up above two. And that's how you can um, get a sketch of this slope field. I have another video where um, I go into this uh, um, type of analysis and I construct slope fields um, in a little more detail. Um, so you look for a function, um, look for constructing a, or sketching a slope field um, for a logistic function. That's what this is. This is a logistic function. All right. Good luck.